Okay, so 21, 22, 23. Okay. 30, it says here, we've got 14x plus 60y is less than or equal to 300. And then this one, just a sample answer, they said 5 and 3. Um, could be several different things. Okay, you could have um, picked several different points. 22, 23. Okay. 37C. Just lots of different possible solutions. You can get those possible solutions just by looking at your shaded area. Okay. And D, plot the solutions. Okay, they're just going to be in your shaded area somewhere. <clears throat> um, 42 42 looks like this it's dotted Here, here's your graph and, and those three points are the ones that work says what we've got here is x plus y is less than or equal to 50. Uh, cost, 0.25x plus 0.75y is less than or equal to 37.5. Weekly costs, here's your costs right here. If, if you have a different scale, so it hits the x-axis as well. For b, the 0.25x plus 0.75y? No, it's just as long as, as long as you get 0.25. You know, that, that, that's one of the reasons why I really don't like x and y. Um, I prefer plastic and paper, well, p and p, um, p and x, there you go. Okay, that's fine. And then we have 51 through 57, here we go. 51, B, 52 is Y equals 390 minus 13 D, and how do we know this? Well, you'd find your slope, that'd be minus 13, negative 13, okay? And then um, you would have to use Y equals MX plus B, or use your point slope to come up with this equation. Or you could go backwards one more step to get to zero, That'd be 390. You can do it a couple different ways. Y-intercept is 390. What that means is um, 390 of the trees would have leaves. After how many uh, days will it close? Okay. Um, it'll be 390, I'm sorry, 30 days. You just set it equal to zero and solve. 53 is F. 54 is D. 55. It's greater than 6 or less than 2, less than negative 2, so it's everything beyond 6 and negative 2. 56 is everything between 1 and 11, inclusive. 57 is no solution. I heard somebody use the term inclusive last night on a movie. It is snowing. It's snowing hard. Big flakes. Anybody ever see the movie Slapshot? It's a great hot old style hockey movie. It's just funny as all get out. But they, but if for this one game, they brought back um, a ringer. You know, this guy who was a really, he, he says, and leading the, um, the the league in penalties from '67 through '69 inclusive is such and such. So that means he led the led the league in '67, '68, and '69. Okay. He led the league between 67 and 69 inclusive. So I thought that was kind of like, wow, that kind of caught me. Um, uh, in this case, it was probably bad. It means he likes to break the rules and hurt people, maybe. I don't know. Okay. 57, no solution. That's a good, good, good question. Okay. So this is one. 
So when is an absolute value going to be less than a negative? Okay. Okay. I'll tell you, what, why don't you let me just go ahead and go over everything and then we'll go back and answer any questions we have. Okay? 31, just so I can put my book away and, and you know, or at least not um, go back and forth between one thing and another. Um, 31 looks like everything between uh, 2 and 9. 32, everything between 1 and 7. 33, um, less than or equal to 3 or greater than 6. Now, so these problems on 31 through 33, notice there were no absolute values, so you just solve what they gave you, period. Okay? 34, it's between 7 and, seven and 16, inclusive. I'm sorry, thank you very much. People said in unison, that was kind of cool. 35, everything between negative 5 and 13. 37, between negative 7 and 4, inclusive. 39, um, ne uh, negative 7 thirds, or negative 2 and a third. And 3, inclusive, everything between. 41, going down here to the bottom, 41 is everything outside of negative 13 or 7. And 43 with everything between negative 20 and negative 18. So these right here, these are an absolute value situation. So you've got to write either a combined inequality or an or statement and then solve. Okay? So I do want to go check the text that I just got on my phone. My brother just had some surgery yesterday, so I want to make sure I'm still getting updates on that. How did you go to the surgery again? How did it go? Pretty good. They were able to save my kidney. Yes. Okay. Was he away for the whole procedure? Or was he oh, no. No, because what they did was they five different the, my sister, she works at the ER, they call them stab wounds, because they, they're one inch long, and they look like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. they look like somebody just stabbed you. But, um, so they just went in and did what they had to do. Okay. okay. So, so right now, make no mistake, the quiz tomorrow is going to be over solving compound inequalities with the ands and the ors. 5.5, solving absolute value inequalities and writing an absolute value inequality to represent a situation, okay? Like it's gotta be within five units of 12. If I would give you something like this, you have to be able to write an absolute value inequality to match that, okay? It's not like crazy. <laughs> and then 5.6, you've gotta be able to graph and shade, okay? part that's going to get people is this middle part or they're and they're going to forget to do the second scenario or they uh, back here they'll do an absolute value somehow with that okay top one is we're just solving. well you're solving and graphing yeah right. yep. what are we doing the, middle one? the middle ones you're solving and graphing yep yep okay yeah. Um, I would have to look that up. I forget which day the odds are on. Okay. So next week is the. Yes. Okay. Yep. For at least until. Yep, and we have this week and next week for school, and then we are gone for a while. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a full full cut. It's a two weeks and the weekends and. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a long time. Okay, so questions over either one of those? So again, 5.4 to 5.6, 
quiz Wednesday. Okay? So, I'm going to move on. Okay? I'm going to move on. Um, I'm not going to select any more review problems for you. If you want to go back and look at some things, I don't think that would be a bad idea. Uh, I'm going to move on to chapter 6, which is not... Um, which is not a, a huge departure from what we've um, what we've done before. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in chapter six is solving systems of equations, which you've never done before. Okay. Okay. So, what is a system of equations? Okay. A a system. Well, if you think of all the different ways we use the word system, like hey, I put a new stereo system in my car. It's awesome. Okay. You've got a radio and speakers that are working together. Okay. We've got a political system. Okay got a house, we got a um, senate, and they're supposed to be working together. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny. Um, and, you know, so all, like an e ecological system, okay? You got the coyotes, you got the rabbits, you got the pheasants, you got the deer, all those things are surviving together, okay? Um, got an educational system, okay? And anytime you have a system, there's so many, there's a lot of different things to, to consider, and we just have to find a way to make it all work, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, let me give you an example of a system of equations. 3x plus 2y equals x minus 3y equals, and I'm going to go like this. 4, negative 1, okay? So what we have is we've got two equations two variables, and these, this is a system of equations that to, to solve this system means that we have to find the value of x and y that works in both, okay? And there's lots of different ways to solve these, okay? Um, we could solve by graphing. We could solve by substitution. We could solve by elimination. Okay. And later on, you're going to learn that we could actually even solve using a, a computer, a graphing calculator. Okay. Some sort of technology. Okay. But in order to understand what a solution is, if I said, let's see, um, is 0, 2, a solution of the system. Okay, what do you know? Why do you think no? Okay, so here's the deal. Let's take a look at it. For it to be a solution, it has to work in the first equation. Does 0, 2, if I plug in 0 for x and 2 for y, does it give me 4? Yes. So it works in the first equation. If I plug in 0 for x and 2 for y, does it give me negative 1? No. So 0, 2 is not a solution. Okay? So, no. It doesn't work in both equations. Okay? Is let's just pick this, um, 2, negative 1, a solution. You look at it and tell me whether you think 2, negative 1 is a solution. Oh, you know what? It's not, is it? I thought it was. I wrote this off the top of my head and I made a mistake. Yeah. 
it should be a plus. Oops. Now, is 2 negative 1 a solution? Yes, it's a solution. It works in the first one because 3 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1 equals 4. 6 plus negative 2 equals 4. That works. Okay, go to my next one. 2 plus 3 times negative 1 equals negative 1. 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. Yes, it works in both. So this would be A. Now the way I've corrected it, yes, it's a solution. Okay. Systems can be really big and really ugly, but the ones we're going to work with have two variables. Okay. So what we're going to do today, we're going to be graphing systems to solve. Okay, so if I would give you a system to graph, I'm going to go to graph paper and you'll see what I'm talking about. Ooh. Let's give you the system. X minus Y equals 2. Okay. And my next one is 2X plus 3Y equals 9. The first way to solve this that we're going to look at is just by graphing. Okay. So if I would take a look and I'd just, just graph the first equation, graph the second equation. So this is where graphing lines, got to be able to do it. Got to be able to do it. Okay. Can I shut off the lights? I can't because then you can't see this. Okay. So let's go like this. First one. What's my x-intercept? Two. You guys should all be screaming two. Because I put in 0 for y and my x is 2. What's my y intercept? Negative 2. So when you are solving these by graphing big graph paper, not the little stuff, and make sure that you are very accurate with your lines. Okay? Try and make sure you continue to go through with the right slope. Okay? So, how many points are on this line? Infinitely many of them. Okay. Now we got to graph this next one. What's my x-intercept? 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4.5. And positive 3. Okay, so there's infinitely many points on the first line, there's infinitely many points on the second line. Where are we going to find the points that work on both of them? Where they intersect. Right here, this is 3, 1. There's my point of intersection. Could you ever have one that's, uh, that's a very good question. You just saved us from doing another example. So, I'm going to go grab some graph paper. Yeah, okay. Um, let me just talk about a couple things. If I would ask you to graph and solve this system, what's the solution to this system? There's no solution. There's no points in common. Okay? Yeah, that'd be like saying, um, um, okay, that dogs, that my dogs and cats could live on the same property. No. We've tried it. It doesn't work. My dogs don't like cats very well. Okay? But here's a... So what we could have is we could have no solutions. We could have one solution. Is there ever a way we could have more than one solution? Yeah! What if both the lines are in the same place? Let's say if I said, okay, there's my first line. 
and then I go to graph my second line, and I didn't realize it, but it's the same line. Okay, now this is interesting. So when I have two lines that are on top of each other, how should we state it? Well, does this point over here work? No. No. Does this point over here work? No. No. So what we say is any point, any point on the line works. Any point on the line works. We could say inflame many points on y equals 2x plus 1. Something like that. Okay? Um, oh, uh, w uh, of the three of the three ways. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll be honest with you. Graphing is probably going to be your least favorite. How many of you guys love graphing? That's why. Okay, and we'll talk about the pluses and minuses of each one. It does take a while, and it may not be extremely accurate. If I gave you two things that intersected at 1.7 and 2.3, that's going to be tough to get that exact point figured out. So, um, so what engineers will do is they will e either use one of these two to solve their situations. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Yeah, you guys are going to need graph paper, and it's probably going to be the bigger graph paper. So go ahead and grab some. Looks like we got half an inch in here. Really? Straight edges, you can use one of those rulers. There might be some straight edges over there. How long does that pendulum be going for? Uh, for a uh, day and a half now. Is that what you would call it, a pendulum? Yeah, this is a little bit more complicated than a pendulum, but, but yeah. Once I get the assignment selected, I'll go ahead and tell you how that works. I know there's something to There is. Seventeen through twenty-five. Odd. Are all of these on graph paper? Yes. Every single one. Every single one. It looks like so far. Wow. Wow. Tell me about it. So there's going to be none on regular paper. No. Doesn't look like it. No. So we can just do this on graph paper. Yes. Nope. Come. Okay, and I'm giving you, look at that, 22 minutes to do it. I know some of you guys are going to be gone late tonight. Yeah, so, so you, you're welcome. So, um, so, yeah, this thing right here, the water is getting sucked up. What is sucking the water up? 
No, gravity doesn't <laughs> suck things up. Okay, now, here, here's what we have. We have a wet foam ball. What's happening to the water on that foam ball? Well, right now, what's happening to it right now? It's evaporating, right? As that water evaporates, that provides a low pressure in the tube that draws that liquid up. And then as, it, as, the head get, as the water gets sucked up, the bulb gets lighter, so then it gets, the head gets heavier and the bulb gets lighter, tips over, re-wets the head, and then, and then the water dumps back in the bulb, and then, so it stands straight up again, water continues to evaporate, draws the water up, the blue water up, and then the head gets heavy, it tips again. This has been going without any energy from me for a day and a half. It wouldn't run out of water. If I would give it an a, a infinite water supply, I would keep going forever. Nope. It should be uh, each one of these. There's no decimals. Will it keep on tilting more and more into a bottle of water? Um, no. So I would have to find some way to supply that water. It only tips over so far. Yes, I think it's cool. This is called the Drinking Bird. It's been around for decades. You can buy them at Hobby Lobby. I have a question. Um, I noticed that there's feathers in the bag and they float it down and unbalance it. I think that's part. It's designed for that. Um, oh, yeah, it's got to be balanced just right. Is there any dates to come, right? Today's date is the 10th. Oh, you know what? Crap. Sorry, 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 sorry. 17, I didn't realize that one they started off with a, uh, a uh, fractional solution. I'm so sorry. So let's start at 19 instead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll make sure that the rest of them are fixed. The rest of them, you're good to go. Yeah, I'm sorry.